Last time I tested what the best food in Minecraft was and you said I didn't test it enough. So we're going even deeper. What is truly the best food in Minecraft? Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my testing stuff out to see if it's true series. Yeah, it probably had a slightly different name before, but I kind of make the names of the series up as I go along. Just over a week ago, I did an episode where we checked out what we felt the best food in Minecraft was, and cooked beef was the winner. However, I got drowned in emails and comments and all sorts of stuff saying, you didn't do this food, you didn't do that food, and shouts for, you need to do a follow-up to do the other foods. So, I'm doing a follow-up to do the other foods. And then we'll compare all of them, from the first one and the second one, to see which one truly is the best food. And by the way, if I've missed any, I'm not doing a part three. So, the nine foods that we are going to test are cooked pork chop, melon slice, beetroot soup, bottle of honey, suspicious stew, honestly, a little bit worried about that one, bread, pumpkin pie, a cookie, and a golden apple. There was a lot of people shouting golden apple. And we are gonna do the test in exactly the same way as we did last time. If you watched the last episode, and if you didn't, what are you doing? Go and watch that one first, the link is in the description below. You will know that we gave ourselves maximum saturation by using the saturation command, and then jump to the top of this 21 high tower, which took us down to a single heart. We then allowed our hearts to jump up until they started to slow down. And then we started sprint jumping in a straight line in that direction. When we got down to just four haunches on our hunger bar, we took one item of food and ate it. Just ate all of it that may have put our haunches up to maximum or just a little bit short of the maximum. We then carry on sprinting and jumping and we keep doing that until we start to take damage through hunger. We then mark that spot and see how many blocks we've jumped. The last nine foods we used were carrot, cooked fish, cooked beef, sweet berries, baked potato, rabbit stew, golden carrot, cooked chicken and cooked mutton. And as we said earlier, steak won, but that doesn't mean it took us the furthest it just happens to be the best combined food as a result of a number of factors. Things like how easy it was to be able to get. You know what I mean? How easy it is to farm and actually have a full stack of it. Bear in mind that rabbit stew took us further, but a full stack of rabbit stew is one rabbit stew. So that's not a lot of good to anybody. So we'll use exactly the same assessment criteria for these nine and then combine all 18 and get a proper result. So let's get cracking. So first off is cooked pork. I'm just gonna run this command and this will be the same command I run every single time. So it is fair. Effect give Avamance Minecraft saturation 20. Pop that on, particle effects. I've got saturation for 20, which should be enough to max that out. We then need to drop down here, take damage down to one heart, let those hearts go up until they stop flashing quite so fast, which is right now and then we start to run jump until we can't run jump anymore. So we are now down to six haunches. Let's get the food in. That's gonna put four of those haunches back and we're gonna carry on until we can't sprint jump anymore. Then we're just gonna jump until we start to take damage. And when we take damage, we mark that spot and that's where we finish. In the comments below, which one of these foods do you think is gonna be the best performer? And do you think it's gonna outperform last time's food let me know comments below and whilst you're at it if you're enjoying the video make sure you slap the like button it really helps out the channel and if you've not done it already hit the subscribe button it'd be great to see you as a member of the sub club go on don't be shy just give it a tap and remember the notification bell needs some love as well we are about to pass the first marker from the last experiment that was sweet berries and we're still jumping quite happily we haven't hit that three haunch point yet that's going to stop us from being able to sprint Pork chops perform pretty well. Maybe I spoke too soon. And the pork has just run out. And there we go. We have bashed into that hole there. Just past that and just past that. That's the golden carrot. That is cooked beef. We were so very close. Let's get that point marked and get back and do the next one. Melon's turn now. So let's get that in 
and grab our melon, jump down, take some damage, wait for that to pop, and then we can get ourselves going and see how far the melon takes us. I suspect not nearly as far, but let's see. The next one is Suspicious Stew. I'm not gonna to lie to you, I'm a little bit nervous about the effect that it gives. You get a random effect from a selection. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Worst case, I could go blind, but it is supposedly very good for saturation. So let's give it a try. The command is on, the jump is done. Ouch, right, let's wait for this one to go and I don't like the way that's got all like purple and green in it. It is not a good looking food at all, is it? It's a bit frightening. Let's see what happens when we actually get to six haunches off. So we are about to go to six haunches and I've got to take in this very, very suspicious looking stew. And uh, there we go. What's it gonna do to me? I have no idea what effect it gave me, if any, but it did give us three haunches back. What's gonna end up at the end? I wonder where we're gonna be. I still look perfectly normal. Maybe it was a less suspicious than normal suspicious stew. Just like we did in the last video, this is the raw data. It's a little bit messy, but that's cause it's raw data. Pause the video, take a screenshot if you want the actual numbers, but we're gonna look at it in a much easier way right now. I've put it into a graph and I've taken out a 2000 block baseline cause everything was above that. And as a result, it gives it a much nicer slope and you can see the differences far more easily. Surprising with some of these things. The cookie was the worst, even worse than a melon slice, which I was really taken aback by. I expected the honey bottle to perform much better. I thought the gapple was gonna be miles better than it was. The beetroot soup went further than the gapple. And the suspicious stew, well, that could have gone anywhere depending on the effect that it gave me. So that one is a bit of a wild card. But what I'm really interested in is comparing this data with last video's data in the same graph. Let's put it all together. When we put all 18 foods together, we get a really interesting looking graph with a, still a very reasonable slope going up, but I'm not sure if it changes very much. The rabbit stew is still the one that gave you the most jumps, but you can only put one in an inventory slot. You can't stack them up. The sweet berries are still the worst, but you can grow millions of them in about half a millisecond. So maybe they're a lot better than some of the ones that give you more jumps. Take a look at that. Take a screenshot of that if you would like. Pause the video. Let me know what you think of that graph down in the comments below. But I'm gonna tell you what I think about it right now. So what did you make of the graph? I'll tell you what I thought of it. 
I thought it changed very little. Some massive surprises. I thought the golden apple would be much better. I thought that the cookie would be much better. I thought the honey bottle would be much better. However, I'm not massively surprised to learn that things that we had last time were just as good as anything that we had on this occasion, which is kind of part of the reason why I chose them last time. However, we've now got all of the data in and that's what matters. So the assessment criteria are still the same. How many can you get in one stack? How easy is it to farm? Also, how far did it allow me to go before I started taking damage? All these things have to come together to make a consideration as to what the best food is. It's not just about the most jumps. It's not just about the most complex or simple recipe. It's not just about how easy it is to farm. It's everything all stuck together. And in my opinion, and I repeat, this is my opinion. You might have a different opinion, but this is my opinion. The best food is still cooked beef. I think that this fella is, it's so easy to farm. You get 64 in a stack. It performed the second best number of jumps are giving you the best saturation compared to the number of jumps compared to the farmability of it. It's got to be cooked beef, the winner. If there's some other testing thing that you'd like me to have a play around with, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you'd be interested in and maybe I can devise some kind of experiment out of it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making. Also, if you're not done already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.